Have you been looking at the new editing software, Wondershare Filmora, and you're trying to see, is this uh, something that's for me? I'm just trying to do YouTube, or I'm just trying to do quick videos, or maybe I'm trying to put together a program or a course or something like that. I'm trying to contemplate, is Wondershare Filmora something for me to use? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be telling you about what I like, what I don't like, who I think this program is for, and why I love it. Coming up next. Hey, what's up guys? It's Diana here with the Passion of Business TV, helping transition your passion into the business that you love. And on this channel, I review programs and software like today. And I also do like small tech reviews and things like that to help startup entrepreneurs. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing if that's something up your alley. But today in this video, I wanna share with you the different things that I've seen and that I like and some of the things that I don't like about Wondershare Filmora. So there are a lot of different programs there are out there. There are a lot of different editing softwares and it really depends on what is the general purpose or just the overall purpose of what you're trying to do with this program are you trying to create short films are you trying to create music videos and things like that are you just trying to do something like some youtube videos and you want to have some great crafty ed editing you want something that can give you a little bit more edge than what you have been using or maybe you're tired of something else but there are a lot of different reasons though, as to why you're looking for a new program but today i'm going to cover a few points of things like i said the things i like the things i don't like about film more or there are a lot of different options and one of the things that i love the most about this company is that they listen to the people that are actually using the program. And so a lot of different software companies, they have their own agenda. It seems to me, this is my humble opinion, it seems to me that they have their own agenda as to the things that they wanna add in certain updates and just, you know, is, you know, 500,000 requests for an update enough or do they prefer to wait till maybe 1 million people and then that may be something feasible for them to do. However, one thing that I've seen with Filmora is that it doesn't matter what it is that's being asked. They typically hop on it within, it seems, in my opinion, it seems to about six to eight months that change is coming through. And sometimes it's less than that. Sometimes it's uh, been so many people that have experienced the same issue or problem that you have and they're changing it. So one of those updates that I saw uh, go through was the one about being able to do color grading. Now, color grading can change an a image from looking or video from looking very cool or to looking very warm when you're trying to create the tonality of the video or the film or the picture of what you're doing. And so that's something that anybody that's starting to just dabble with the videography uh, or photography and they're just trying to get used to it. That's something that they use as color grading to be able to change the tonality of the picture, get their own style and imaging and their way of doing things. And so that was something that came through or being able to reverse and not have a style and imaging and their way of doing things. And so that was something that came through or being able to reverse and not have to, you know, buy all of these additions uh, to the program or spend money every time that there's a new update. And I won't throw any, na any names out there, but there are some programs where for every update, they want you to buy it again, maybe at a smaller discounted price, but you're essentially continuously repurchasing the software. Second thing that I like about Filmora is the effects store. The effects store gives you that added edge. So if you're familiar with some of the other programs that may be out there, like Adobe Photoshop and the Creative Cloud and things like that, amazing product, I'm not knocking it at all, but it's very, very uh, extensive. And so it's not very hard because a lot of people are using it and they're having great success with it, but there is a bit of a learning curve. And so you're trying to figure out what pro program do I use for what? And one of the things that I love the most about Filmora is that I could do a lot of different simple things to really just elevate the, uh, cr the, the create, just the capabilities that I could do, the creativity, uh, just so many different things that I could add into it and just up the quality with some small edits. That may be a title, that may be some fire or air or something like that, like some kind of anime effect if you're doing some short film or something like that for school or class or just playing around. You know, so it allowed me to uh, just do a lot of different things in addition to the YouTube videos, as well as video courses, uh, and just maybe a title or a panel or something like that that I'm able to come up with, but it gives me a lot of different options. So the effect store, is really going to help with being able to share in your creative abilities, whether you're trying to do a short film, playing around with some different effects, 
for like again some clip or viral video or whatever the case may be or just if you're a youtuber and you're creating youtube videos and you want to be able to again increase the quality without having to deal with a steep learning curve another thing that i love about filmora is that it literally feels like an all-in-one program now yes i love personally i love filmora and i'm gonna get into some of the limitations um, in just a moment but the thing is that it really is an overall program if you aren't trying to deal with a very steep learning curve maybe you're not trying to put together feature films and you're or even short films and you don't want to use uh, in a program a program like the Adobe Creative Cloud, uh, Creative Cloud Suite or you know Photoshop or anything like that and you just want something simple something simple something basic to make things look amazing that's what I was looking for that's why I wanted to use this program so it's a lot of different youtubers that are out there using this program it is something that I primarily use but it hits on all of the different points that are important to me when I'm looking looking for an editing software so it really depends what types of things are you looking to do with the program that you're looking to purchase again if you're a youtuber if you're just making maybe you're doing small courses um, on Thinkific or Teachable or something like that or maybe you are just trying to create something for maybe for your church or for your community or your group or something like that or a nonprofit you're just getting kicked off and so you want to start creating some ads or something like that maybe start to share uh, just some stories of people that maybe you're helping get some testimonials and things like that have a banner nice text that comes in and you're able to say hey this is Susan Susan had this whatever issue going on and she came to our program and this is what happened and you know a nice transition into Susan's story and you're sharing it and you know a nice transition back to you exit outro all of that that's what Filmora is for that's really why I love this program it lets me touch on a lot of different areas and hit on those small cylinders with a big impact and the learning curve was not very steep at all another great feature about Filmora is that um, it does allow you to do the 360 video as well as the action camera video and so I think they're still kind of working on the 360 uh, video and the, those cameras I'm not exactly sure but I do believe they just recently had an update come out about it uh, and if, if so I'll link down in the description below where you can find all of that but they did have one come out with the action camera and it is superb I recently picked up a cheap action camera just to kind of play around with it just to start playing in that universe uh, of video and start to test it out and so I didn't need another program I didn't have to switch uh, anything special between my DSLR my cell phone or this little action camera and I could just use the same software and change it and it works so let's talk about some of the limitations that I have experienced within Filmora so Filmora the one big thing for me has been the audio doesn't mean that there's something wrong with it or it comes to poorly but when you look at the audio bars compared to some other programs for example Camtasia that's the one I have experience using is that the audio bars are very small so when you're trying to look for certain peaks uh, as well as you know check just for small minor frequencies and the sound things like that it can be very difficult to see it now they do have different skins that you can change from from a light skin which is the the way that it looks versus a dark skin uh, and try to kind of help with that but at the same time and you can even detach the audio so that you can try to zoom in and see it a little bit better but the audio bar is very small and so when you're trying to do those very de delicate edits to the audio it can be kind of difficult so one workaround that I use is just well it kind of feels like by now I'm able to do these edits and it's a, it's okay you know I can about tell where I want to do things and where I want to edit stuff and chop this out add this in and things like that um, so that's one of the limitations that I've seen so like I said one of the workarounds that I like to use if it's very very uh, fine-tuned within the audio that I need to make is I use audacity audacity is specifically a free program and I'll link that down below in the description where you can find that uh, but it's a free program that I use for my podcast every week for the passion of business podcast and I can make those small things. so if I accidentally sneeze or if I cough or if I get too close to the microphone and I have a plosive or a large spike in the audio then I can really really zoom in and just get that big spike and chop it out and then I can blend it the audio together and if I need to again I can rip that audio from the video transfer it over to audacity and then put it back so that's one of the limitations for me that's been a big hang-up uh, when I first got started with the program now it's not because 
the I think I record a little bit better as far as the videos not having to do so many edits and things like that but when it does come to really wanting to add in something small or just really fine-tune something with the audio I can't really adjust those audio bars like I would want to because they are so small so I did send in a request for that because that's another great feature is that if there is a change that you want they have a, a system within the program that you can just submit the request and they'll kind of let you know um, you know is this something that's in the working is this a little bit farther down the line or will we probably be waiting for another update Another limitation about Filmora that I kind of don't like is that when I'm editing a, a video or something like that, I really don't want to have to go and add the video again to the PIP or the picture in picture bar. I want to just kind of have two in the same thread. So I don't want to have to find, like if I've edited, if I've color graded, if I've made all of these different edits and changes to the current video, I really just want to kind of copy that and you know edit over that particular thread or you know very easily move something so you have to put it in the picture in picture which is a whole nother bar um, like again if i've already currently edited the video that i'm using i can't seem to grab that already edited version bring it down and add in something else on top of it i have to grab the original file that i used and maybe didn't save and bring it down in the picture in picture file so that's something i really don't like but it's not that big of a deal because what i have done as a workaround for that is just go ahead and save my current project and then i can bring that in everything's changed as far as the color grading and things like that uh, or the audio maybe i was too loud in the video and i needed to adjust the audio and all of that and i can bring that edited version down into picture in picture and then it's already that completed file as far as color grading and audio that i can just start using third limitation that i don't like about the more is that when I'm editing something and I want to make it large screen so I can really check the details on it or maybe I'm trying to you know just make sure the quality is there it seems to be kind of fuzzy when I'm looking at it so if I take if I'm taking a, a video that I just finished editing you know it doesn't matter if it's been saved or what have you if I blow that up to widescreen it seems to look kind of fuzzy you know so I don't want that I want to see pretty much the finished product in the view window, not the smaller one, I'm talking about the, the widescreen, and it's just large to cover up the entire computer monitor. And so it seems to get fuzzy. I don't know, maybe it's my computer, but I've heard other people have the same challenge as well. So that's something is that when I expand that edited video, I would like to see it, you know, completely clear and everything like that. But again, another workaround is that I just kind of got used to looking at it in the small, and you can adjust the frames and open it up wider so that you can kind of get like a medium sized version and that still holds the quality but it's not until you save and export that video that you can actually see the exact quality and did things exactly line up the way that you want to one quick tip before i let you guys go on this video is that uh, i've been hearing some people talk about when they're playing back their videos that it's moving kind of slow or it's a little choppy so this can be not always but from my experience this can be from having maybe a slower computer doesn't mean it's an old computer but maybe you don't have the amount of ram or the or memory that your computer may need uh, for it to move at that proper speed so that the same way like you're watching this and if i do my hands like that you can see it move without it looking like i'm doing the robot or i'm trying to break dance which i've never been very good at honestly either of them <laughs> but one way to kind of help with that is to reduce the um, editing to from maybe 1080p to 720p this can help when you're bringing in that video as well as another thing is the file size so if you're using the .mov files you can already export this to a program or bring it into filmora and just export it as a uh, .mp4 or mpeg-4 and that will help completely different now some people will complain if you are like a high level professional when it comes to um, like i said cinematography if you're really trying to do short films and things like that some people are very very particular in the type of quality uh, as far as the file type that they use maybe you're in school and you need to export it as a specific file type and they won't accept mp4 they only accept mov so you have to take those into consideration but if you're just like me you're trying to do youtube videos maybe for your small business or things like that export that video bring it into filmora export it as an mp4 
And when you bring that MP4 file into Filmora, it'll play just like normal. So that's one quick tip. If you ever run into that challenge, that may be helpful for you. So that's my quick video on Filmora. I hope that you got value out of it. If you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up on this button and be sure to like or subscribe to the video, uh, to the channel, not the video, but to the channel if you enjoyed it. I do these videos every single week, not necessarily on software, but I can, it depends, you know, to put in the comments below what you're looking for. Maybe I have it, maybe I don't, we'll see. But I typically do startup tech gear reviews, uh, as well as some software reviews, review programs, things like that, that are beneficial to helping startup entrepreneurs. That's what this entire channel, network, and everything is dedicated to helping transition your passion into the business that you love. So I will talk to you guys on the next video.